हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय चैनल आफ्टर ए लॉन्ग टाइम आज मोस्ट ऑफ यू हैव रिक्वेस्टेड मी टू एक्सप्लेन हाउ टू डू द सिंपल पेंडुलम एक्सपेरिमेंट सो आज टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन व्हाट आर द प्रोसीजर्स एंड थ्योरी बिहाइंड इट एंड एज आई हैव ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन हाउ टू यूज द वन ईयर कैलिपर सो आई होप इट वुड नॉट बी ए प्रॉब्लम फॉर यू टू to take the measurements and do the experiments so uh, let's continue uh, the aim of the experiment is and those who have not seen the one year caliper experiment they can go to the previous videos and uh, do watch it so the aim of the experiment to plot l versus t where l is length and t is the time period and l versus t square graph by determining the time period of the simple pendulum for different length different lengths and to find the length of the second pendulum so this is our aim of the experiment so as we know here to do this uh, experiment we need after the m we need the apparatus and here what do we need in the apparatus we require a pendulum bob thread a long thread actually this is a very long thread of um, 1.5 meters you can say then stand cork scale and of course one year caliper without one year caliper we cannot proceed so then the theory part in theory we know the time period of the simple pendulum is 2 pi l by g root over this is the general formula as most of you have read it in uh, your uh, class 11th waves ch uh, oscillation chapter so t is equals to 2 pi l by g root over so now squaring both the sides t square is nothing but 4 pi square l by g you can see and here if l is equals to g by 4 pi square i am keeping it inside a bracket and multiplied with t square so whenever you are going to plot this two uh, parameters that is l versus t square and uh, you can see here l is directly proportional to t square i am just writing this it as capital l and this as t square so they are directly proportional so if i plot the graph like this l is the independent parameter so taken along x axis and y is t square we will have a straight line so this things we have to plot and whenever we are going to plot l versus t you can see here l is the independent parameter taken along x axis and l versus t so square graph so this will be like this so we need to show the nature of the curve is coming like this so how to proceed let's proceed uh, after this what you are going to write of course after this you are going to write the procedures which i am not going which i am going to tell but i am not going to write then after that uh, we are going to go for observations so as you know in observations especially we go for list count calculations so here we need the list count of one year caliper that is nothing but 0.01 cm and of course least count of 
stopwatch. Okay, I forgot to write the uh, in apparatus. I forgot to write the stopwatch. That is very very essential. So let's write here. That is your stopwatch. So here list count of stopwatch. After looking into the apparatus, you are going to write uh, what is the list count of it in seconds, of course. <clears throat> so now, after this, what we have to uh, do? We have to go for tabulation. In tabulation, first of all, we are going to use the vernier caliper. So before going to the tabulation, we need to understand how this L is been defined. That is. T is equals to 2 pi L by G root over. What is this L? This L is nothing but the effective length of the pendulum. What is effective length? Now the question is, now hope all of you have seen the pendulum. So it is a spherical bob attached with a you can see here hook so effective length is nothing but the center of the pendulum you have to take the center of the pendulum then from the center of the pendulum to the point of suspension point of suspension means suppose we have a thread here let me draw the diagram again this is your pendulum attached with a hook then this is the wire you can see so center of the pendulum is C and up to the point of suspension. Point of suspension means suppose I have a cork over here. I have attached a cork over here. Then up to this point. This point and this is called the L effective length. So in order to determine this effective length, we first need to determine what is R plus H. What is R and what is H? H is the hook length you can see here this is what is called H and what is R? R is nothing but the center of the pendulum the radius of the pendulum R is equals to the radius of the pendulum so we need to this L is nothing but this L is equals to the radius of the pendulum this thing is the key actually there is nothing else if you know one year caliper you can easily do simple pendulum experiment but only thing you need to learn is how to determine this r plus h so radius of the l is nothing but l is equals to radius of the pendulum plus hook length plus the length of the thread length of the thread and what is thread? This is the thread. This one is I have taken it as the thread. So <clears throat> this three addition is nothing but called the effective length of the pendulum. So how to determine this effective length of the pendulum? So in order to determine the effective length, we need to first determine R plus H. Now I am telling you how to determine this R plus H. Now first of all, all of you know by using one year caliper, you can easily determine what is the diameter of this spear? You take the jaws of the uh, vernier caliper and lower jaw, use the lower jaw and you can determine the diameter of the uh, simple pendulum that is D can be determined. And by dividing D with 2, you can determine the radius of the pendulum that is over that can be determined by using a table of course MSR vc uh, vsr and total all of you know how to determine this one msr is in centimeter vc is a number vsr is in centimeter and total is in also in centimeter that is nothing but msr plus vsr this is msr plus vsr all of you know the vernier caliper so that's why i am just giving you hints so r is been determined by determining the diameter this is your diameter now how, next thing what we have to do you see here next thing what we have to do we need to determine the red the diameter of the pendulum as well as with hook that means we have to hold the entire pendulum with this hook inside the lower jaw of the uh, 
uh, one year caliper so this is nothing but called 2r plus h try to understand 2r plus h what is h h is nothing but the length of the hook is h and from here to here this is nothing but the diameter so we are writing it as 2r so 2r plus h we can determine this one by using a one year caliper so 2r plus h needs to be determined by using the same table only msr vc vsr total only three three observations you have to take and then average it so one table we are determining diameter which is nothing but equals to 2r another table we are determining 2r plus h so now i am giving you a calculation right now 2r plus h minus r you tell me what will be the answer 2r plus h minus r is nothing but r plus h 2r minus r is nothing but r plus h so here is the key you can take the average of the second table that is 2r plus h and the in the first table wherever you have determined 2r divide it by 2 you are going to get r and that you have to subtract this is from first table you are going to get that is by dividing d by 2 and this is from second table average this is the average of second table and you have determined r plus h once you have determined r plus h your task is over because thread length can be determined by using a scale only you can take the scale place the zero over here and you can easily determine by using a scale here like this you can easily determine what's the length of the thread so like this we have to determine the effective length of the pendulum that is nothing but r plus h plus the length of the thread this is how you are going to determine the l part now comes the actual table 3 where what we are going to do in table 3 so here we have to make three tables remember we have to make here three tables table 1 for determination of table 1 determination of 2r that is your the columns are msr vc vsr and total that is nothing but msr plus vsr in centimeter this one is also in centimeter this one is also in centimeter and of course here you have to take three observations one two three table two is the same here you need to determine determine determination of or you can say determination of 2r plus h what is h h is nothing but the hook here also the three readings three readings will be there under the same heading of msr vc vsr total now comes the table 3 this is the important part table 3 here you take serial number please note down what is your r plus h and r plus h will be determined i have already told you how it will be determined 2 r plus h that means table 2 average minus table 1 that is table 1 you can make another column over here like uh, this is your 2r so 2r divided by 2 so this this is going to give you the radius this one is going to give you the radius so this r plus h in centimeter needs to be determined then length of the thread of the thread the here comes effective length effective length in centimeter now i am telling you what is what should be taken as effective length now let's start our observation from 30 effective length will be taken like this 30 40 50 60 and so on you have to take the effective length like this means suppose your r plus h has come come out as 2.3 try to understand in order to make it 30 we need to 
determine what should be the length of the thread. So length of the thread has to be equals to 27.7. You see addition of 27.7 with this 2.3 is going to give you 30. So this is how you are going to determine the length of the thread using a scale only. Only a half meter scale or a meter scale you can use. So this is your observation one. Like this, in order to make the effective length length 40, you this is constant. This 2.3 is constant all throughout. Means in order to make it 40, what we have to do? We have to take the thread length is equals to 37.7. You add 37.7 with 2.3, your effective length will come out as 40. Then after fixing this, Remember that the 40, the length 40 should be at the lower edge of the cork. Whenever you have a stand and we have attached the stand with a cork, at the lower edge, this 40 centimeters should lie. 40 centimeter length or for position 40 should lie at this end. That means this is your bob attached with a hook and this 40 position 40 should lie over here. At the lowest position of the cork. Then after that time for suppose I am taking 10 oscillations. T1, T2 and here average T. Average T, T means T1 plus T2 divided by 2. Why I am taking T1, T2 and sometimes it has been taken 3 times also T1, T2, T3 also. And uh, T1, T2, T, uh, you can take the average to minimize the error. So why we are taking average? We are taking the average for minimizing the error. So this is T1, T2. That means for same length, we have to take two oscillations, two times. And they, then take the average. So uh, two times, how you are going to take the oscillations? Now suppose this is my pendulum disturbed to certain point making an angle theta and remember here you have to take the small angle oscillations not a large angle oscillations because the formula 2 pi l by g root over time period formula is only valid for small angles so that means suppose you are going to start the oscillation from here so that means you have to switch on your stopwatch your stopwatch should be switched on here so it will move like this, then return to the same position, then one oscillation complete. Try to understand. Then it will move again like this, then return to the initial position, then second oscillation. Likewise, you have to go for 10 oscillations. So wherever you are starting doesn't matter. You can start from here, from the middle, but it will move, then go Go back to the other extreme, then return to the same point. Then only one oscillation will be complete. So for two times you have to take the observation, then take the average. Then we need to determine the time period. How to determine? These are all in seconds. So time period is nothing but time taken to complete one oscillation. So that means this times are determined, this average time is been determined for 10 oscillations. So T by 10 is going to give me the time period of the simple pendulum so this is t then after that you have to make a column t square in second square of course because we need to plot the graph between effective length this effective length versus t and effective length versus t square so this two graph has to be plotted and the nature of the curve will come out as like this we know this this will be the nature L versus T will be like this and L versus T square will be a straight line. So this is how this uh, simple pendulum experiment has been done. And after this, you need to only, there is no cal calculation. Huh, yes, another thing I have forgot that you need to determine or to find the length of the second pendulum. How to find the time period of a second uh, or length of the second pendulum? Uh, length of the second pendulum can be calculated by uh, from the graph you see if we have l versus t square graph 
it's a straight line so what is the uh, what is the time period of a second pendulum t is equals to 2 seconds now if it is 2 seconds so since in y axis we have t square so there will be a term or there will be a point where we we will have 4 seconds now whenever we have a 4 seconds in the y axis we will drop a perpendiculars over here suppose this is the graph and then we have to drop it along uh, towards the perpendicular to on y axis we have to drop the perpendicular on y axis so this is the length of second pendulum the second pendulum is a pendulum whose time period is equals to 2 seconds which time period is equals to 2 seconds so uh, along y axis we have a 4 second there will be a position where we will have 4 seconds then drop perpendiculars then we will have the length of the second pendulum so after this table and determination you have to find out the result that is the nature of the curve what has been studied and what uh, is the length you have obtained for the second pendulum then uh, result precautions sources of error so this is this is all about uh, today's discussion regarding the simple pendulum experiments i hope all of you have liked the video thank you everyone thank you for joining